There's a lot of shared knowledge we can. So first of all, who am I? I've been working on Cosmos since 2017. I worked on IBC, um, which is Inner Blockchain Communication. Um, I wrote the white paper and I invented Cosmwasm, which is another smart contracting platform built on Wasm, obviously, and targeting the Cosmos. So if you haven't heard of Cosmos, uh, it's one of the early projects. It was white paper back in 2016 alongside Polkadot. It was about, the thesis there was app chain. A few theses here, which I'm proven. The first is proof of stake. It was one of the first proof of stake Byzantine fault tolerant networks. I think in definitely the first one to write it down and maybe the first one to launch it. Um, it's now proven the app chain thesis that we don't have one chain to rule them all and we're competing to be the one major chain. They have many chains that specialize and they connect to each other to launch progress. And that seems in the last few years people have accepted that thesis as well. And the other one is that interchain communication, interblockchain communication is key to build that future where there are many app chains. So we need fast finality with BFF, Byzantine fault tolerant proof of stake using interblockchain communication to really have this app chain thesis. And that's Cosmos. Um, IBC is the communication. It's a layer way beyond bridges. It uses full light client proofs. No multi-sigs anywhere. Full light client proofs bi-directionally. Uh, it's very extensible, has a very high level semantics like TCP and HTTP, um, allowing um, all the plumbing, all the packet networking, very, very composable. And on top of it, you can build arbitrary app logic. So you can, on top of that, build a token bridge, you can build cross contract calls, atomic swaps across chains, many, many things, inheriting the security composability of the base layer. Uh, definitely check it out. If you're interested in bridges, anything cross chain, check out IBC. I had the Interop Summit early this week, and it seemed like it was the end goal. A lot of bridges are out there looking at IBC as the end goal where they want to be eventually. It currently only works on Cosmos, soon between Polkadot and Cosmos, and I think uh, they're looking at a few other ecosystems as well. Maybe one day to Ethereum, hopefully. Um, and Cosmwasm is a Wasm-based virtual machine. Uh, it's probably, I invented this, uh, started working on 2019, 2020, and now it's on over 25 blockchains in the Cosmos and one on Polkadot, uh, one parachain. And it's probably the most widespread VM outside of the EVM. So EVM is everywhere. EVM is king. That's clear. But every other VM, Solana works on Solana, right? EOS has their, their for EOS. Everyone has their ones. This is probably the only other really, really multi-chain VM outside of the EVM. And we worked hard from day one to make it multi-chain and to make it portable. So it can plug into other ecosystems. And there's work on bringing to Avalanche now, as well as Composable, um, and it's really tied around IBC. So this brought these ideas in there. So when doing all this, from early days in Cosmos, uh, throughout building Cosmosm, there's a lot we learned from Ethereum. I mean, Ethereum's king. Ethereum started the whole project. Smart contracts, they invented that, right? So the developer community, I think, is a key to Ethereum. Why the, well, Ethereum was here, and every uh, Ethereum killer has failed. Since 2007, there have been like 20 projects that claim to be Ethereum killers and they never succeed because the developers are key. The community around Ethereum is amazing. The network, the tooling, the whole environment is amazing and no one can kill that. Don't care what your tech is, how fast you go, you can't kill it. And I think it's a really, really important thing that people should learn from Ethereum. It doesn't matter what you're doing tech-wise, you have the community here and Ethereum is amazing in that way. I think we have to learn more of that. We're working on it, but we need to learn more. I think also composability. Ethereum allowed this really, really rich composability between contracts, right? Not like this UTXO model, but this really powerful composability between contracts. Um, and demonstrated while using these contracts and these complex patterns, the real world usage patterns. What people do with it. What do you do? Do you make fungible tokens? Do you make DAOs? What are, what, how DeFi compose? No one knew that in 2016, 17. No one knew what would happen, right? Make a token, what else, what else do we do? So these patterns of what people use, how to upgrade contracts, that came out of Ethereum, just the experience from Ethereum, and classes of attacks as well, how hackers break contracts, right? No one knew that when they were writing it, so we've learned that in retrospect from Ethereum, uh, you know, the good and bad things about what will happen in the real world. So when we were designing Cosm Wasm, we took a big look at Ethereum. We wanted to build a Wasm engine because we thought it was fun, and Wasm was the next VM. And so we targeted Rust, that was like our choice. After that, we looked at Ethereum and figured composability is important, but more important than composability is safety. 
There's a lot of features in Ethereum that are very powerful, but very dangerous. Reentrancy attacks are everywhere. There's um, overflow errors. There's many different types of errors. It's hard to test it. I mean, I came into Solidity in 2017, and you couldn't really test it except by writing deploy it on a chain and run JavaScript tests. There's no way of really doing uh, clear testing, powerful testing, uh, detailed testing on lots of business cases. I came from back-end development. I understand if you're launching something secure, you need lots of test coverage, analysis on it, and it just seemed like hard to do something as complex as DeFi without having those tools. So when we did this, we thought about this heavily, and we tried to make it as easy as possible to write secure applications. We found all these errors people do because they oversaw one little line and their contract got hacked and tried to make that impossible, or as hard as possible. And the other design we lost was interchain first. You can't add an interchain later. You cannot, it's really hard to add interchain as an afterthought because the whole design does not accept it. Everyone's thinking of synchronicity. So I'm gonna just step back a bit and say what we've already gone. So Ethereum has looked at that. Vitalik actually does admire Cosmos as a tech, on the tech wise. And I think it's brought a lot of ideas into Ethereum. You know, they, I was at DevCon in 2017, they talked about proof of stake, Casper. I mean, they were going to launch it. It took a few years to launch it, um, but they did. And Tendermint and Cosmos really pioneered this, right? They pioneered, they brought domain it. They were doing the research for years before that. And this is something that really eventually got into Ethereum. They realized, hey, proof of work is great. We have it, it works now. Let's launch with it. Very, very practical, but we need to make something better. So they took this idea already, multi-chain idea. So there's not one Ethereum chain. Now we have you know, Binance chain, we have Arbitrum, we have Polygon, not just the roll-ups, but all the other chains that were EVM compatible that launched. On Near, they have EVM compatible chain. All of these ideas were kind of, we only need one Ethereum, and this, over the last few years, it's really come up that, that no, we have a multi-chain world. And once we have this multi-chain world, recently, Ethereum is realizing cross-chain is key. Once you have multiple chains, we can't just ignore them and fight. We have to connect them. They're bridges over here. They're roll-ups allowing much stronger proof guarantees, but also bridges between unrelated chains. And this is actually key, right? This is like Ethereum is moving into this now and realizes this is key for the future, that all these different ecosystems interoperate and we can build, collaborate over these chains. However, there's a lot to learn on that. I think we can teach them. Cosmos has been working on that for a long, long time. I'd like to share a little, a little insights here. And the first one is complexity is hard. Like once you have writing four contracts that call each other or call arbitrary CW20 to, uh, ERC20 tokens is a bit tricky and handling all the cases, especially when you call into arbitrary external logic. But when you start doing it over multiple chains with possible timeouts, relay errors, synchronicity errors, uh, if you query something, it's not the same as when you, when you execute on it. Um, all kinds of error cases, error handlings, that gets very tricky, especially composing over multiple chains. So the, already the tools for composability are as difficult to write many contracts together. It's really easy to write a few contracts in Solidity. When you try to get these large, large composition of contracts, it's harder and harder with complexity. And then with interchain contracts, it's even trickier to reason about all the possible states that can happen over multiple blockchains. So I think we realized that, that we need to make sure applications can scale in complexity, right? This is like a higher level of complexity. And how do we tame complexity? How do we make it easier? So these are some of the things you've been doing on Cosmos, particularly Cosmosm, to make it easier to build these large applications, this large composition at the scale. Um, the first one is looking at the needs of complex production apps. You don't start with like, let's make Pet Shop and Crypto Zombies really easy. Let's look at what people need to build Aave, right? Like that's our target audience, people building something like that, right? Before they go and cross chain. And the second thing is making standard patterns bulletproof. I'm kind of surprised, like these proxy libraries, been many attacks for many things, like upgradability of contracts is essential. But these kind of like delegate call attacks, is, it's, it's tricky, there's a lot of trickiness there. So it's almost like we need to standardize, and not just in like libraries, Solidity libraries, but actually in infrastructure. You could have GE have precompiles, have support for these common patterns. The same way we do um, for IBC, we build them into the blockchain, so we don't have to write them in contracts. They're actually built into the standard blockchain as functionality. So I think that if you look in the future of Ethereum, maybe they consider these patterns actually as precompiles 
or as native functionality in the actually native Go or Rust code. Finally, I think that testing is essential. So you can't, you have to make sure you can test at every level. You can test your business logic, you test your math inside of it, you test the contract itself, you test the contract calling other contracts. Then you test the contract calling other contracts on other chains. Right? These are all levels of testing, and they should be easy as possible so people can cover all the most use cases possible and run them quickly. And I think that we must have the framework and, depend and tooling to make this happen. So the tooling has gotten much, much better the last five, six years on Solidity um, and running testing environments. But I think there's a lot more to do, and a lot of it is actually, I think, due to the fact that there's not, you can't really test it natively. It doesn't, it's its own language. It doesn't come with tooling. There's no Solidity outside of Ethereum. Whereas if you pull another language like Rust in there or JavaScript, they have a whole bunch of tooling, whole testing libraries, a whole set of mocks, all this information you can bring. Um, so I'll go look quickly here. I mean, here are standard attack vectors in Ethereum. You probably all know these ones. If you're actually developers, you've probably had to make sure your contracts do not have issues here. Um, so yeah, reentrancy, uh, the proxy library call, uh, fallback functions, default visibilities. These are all things I pull them off of, um, I think Open Zeppelin or Consensus had a list of the top vulnerabilities to avoid. And these are basically standard ones. So in Cosmos, when we designed it, we designed security first. We try to make all of those impossible to happen. Right? Like, if you call, a f if you execute a message on another contract, it will automatically abort your contract. There's no way of not catching it unless you explicitly handle the error and then handle it some other way. Unless you explicitly catch the error, it will just abort your contract. Um, no reentrancy is possible. We must explicitly list the public messages, not have it like private. It's not pr public as default, it's private by default unless you make it explicitly public. So it's a little harder for some devs, but you avoid a lot of these errors you can get. Um, and we have removed things like, you know, there's no fallback function. You can't do certain things you can do in Solidity, but things are often used in attack vectors. We just remove them. So it's, sometimes it makes it a little harder to build. We said, hey, it makes it easier to build your project in an unsecure way. Let's just remove it so you have to spend a little more time building it, but be secure at the end. So there's a lot of design work done in here, and I think as you look at new frameworks, new languages to replace Solidity like Viper and other languages, um, I think this is one important key to try to make it secure by default. And testability. So we have lots of testability as I covered earlier. And finally, as we're going this new world, interchain first. I'm going to say, like, this is another concept. I see bridges coming out. I was at the, at the summit. The idea of bridges saying tokens makes sense. When you're calling another function, I call a contract over here. Actually, you make an error back. A lot of these bridges don't even pass it out. There's like these new like, actually doing some call calls, but they don't return the error or the success. There's no return value of the messages. And there's no return value in another block. It might happen 10 minutes later, you get the result of what happened here. And maybe you have to roll back the original transaction locally if it failed over there. How do you handle that, right? Like, how do you manage to even model that mentally before you write in your contract? So. These concepts of how the state modeling, when you actually have interchain composition, and you say, okay, I'm not just gonna send a token that bounces back. I'm gonna go over here, and I'm going to deposit my, um, I'm gonna trade tokens, then deposit an LP here, and then use the LP over here as collateral, right? Um, I'm gonna deposit an LP and then move them as collateral, right? Like, that's a complex thing. If it fails in the middle, how do you avert it? Where do you stop? How do you restart it? How do you expose it to users? Do you even have the tools to represent what's happening? Do you even have the workflow to represent it, to test it, but to understand it yourself? So I think these are concepts that need to be built into frameworks. It's hard to understand it already, and if your frameworks don't give you the language to express it, it's very, very hard. So I think as we're moving this new world, especially as Ethereum breaks the interchain, I really want it to be done well. I, I don't want any more bridge hacks. I was just watching those in 2022, and sad, so I think learning from these ideas and really learning how to build interchain first, I think you don't have to use Cosmos, keep using Ethereum, but I think learning from how Cosmos is working on these attempts and solving it, I think is great and can bring lots of knowledge back into Ethereum, into rollups, and into bridges between different, different Ethereum chains, EVM chains. Um, so yeah, that's basically my talk. I want to explain some ideas here and how I see we can in the future. I'd like to see this collaboration. Um, that I'd like to see more collaboration between Cosmos and Ethereum. That's really, really a key point, I think. There's like, they've been their own little world. I think Cosmos isolated itself a lot too in its own little tech world. But the, with Interchain coming out there, I really think these bridges need to be more thought out, and this, uh, especially the research aspect of it, shared between blockchains. 
Um, and as people work in EWAS, I mean, these other engines, like bringing the secure, a new languages, the security first mentality, like, oh look, we're actually really targeting extremely complex applications. We're not 2017 anymore. We have really, really complex multi-chain applications going on here, really comp complex composition on single chains. How to make it secure? How to build into a framework that? And talking about building in bridges and frameworks, I'd love to see something like IBC built in to GETH as a primitive. You don't have to worry about it. You don't try to build bridges as contracts, but actually the native code. Say, hey, here's code to do proofs and send packets trustlessly with like client proofs across chain. It's built into a blockchain. Your contract can just use it now. You don't have to worry about anything else. You can just use it. This does exist on one chain called Ethermint. I think Cantos also. There are Cosmos, EVM compatible Cosmos chains that allow the contracts to actually connect over IBC to other Cosmos chains. It's a whole other fork. It's nothing like GETH. But I think you can look at these examples of where they're exposing these high level primitives of intra blockchain communication to the EVM. So I think they're great things to look at, and hopefully these ideas can be brought in to other EVM chains. Um, and I'd love to see Cosmosm, if it's, I don't even know if it's possible, but as more and more rollups come out, I'd love to see it like an execution environment on some you know, Ethereum rollup, and see how we can do that, and maybe bridge IBC over it. So if anyone's working on rollups, and understands rollups really well, I'd love to talk with you, and see how we can kind of use rollups, and IBC and Cosmosm, maybe bridge some rollups to start bridging Ethereum to the Cosmos, and interchain. Okay, and here's some websites. If you want to check out Cosmosm, check our website out or chat.cosmosm.com is a Discord. It's very, very dev focused. If you're a developer, if you want technical information, there's no when moon. We have no chain. Cosmosm is not a chain. We're a library in 25 chains. We focus just on core tech here. So if you want to, um, please check this out. Check the Discord out and you can learn lots of stuff. You have a question back there. Can I, should I repeat? I got it, okay, yeah. so uh -huh. what the question was, was on EVM, you can go to the Block Explorer and verify the contract code, where other things like Solana or this you cannot. I think that is... That's, that's my biggest obstacle as a developer, yeah. and because composability is okay, but if I don't know what I'm composing to, that's where this stops. Mm. So, what can, understood, do, understood. what can you do about... Uh, we can do it, so the problem is, we are one small company, very low funding, and we're not getting really much money from these large foundations or bug chains. Um, so we can't do everything, really. Like, if someone says, yes, we want to do this, we started doing this ages ago. We have scripts to verify. You can verify. In fact, Etherscan, I love to have Etherscan. I love to build Etherscan for the Cosmos. Etherscan does not automatically verify your code. What Etherscan does is you have to upload the code. It verifies that Solana Solidity source code is equal to this EVM bytecode, right? We can do this right now with Cosmosm. We have terministic compilation since 2020 for ages. We have scripts to do this. That you, that you can say, given this Rust package, this version of code, this game of Rust code, you compile it and it'll give you a hash. If that matches the hash on chain, this was the source code. So it has to happen. There's a few different compiler versions in there. So you have to compile the same version of the compiler as you did it, it does work. The problem is that no one has set the tooling on it, the front end tooling, where you can upload the code, it will do it for you, and it'll stick like Etherscan. We have no UI for it. You can manually verify it. If I tell you in a contract, you can manually verify it. We have no quick verification, no UI for it, no explorers, and I'd love to build that thing, but yes, there's only so many hands. I'm out of time, but we can talk later. Thank you very much, everyone.